uh, let us invite someone uh, on, on Dantera's day, someone who has uh, created a lot of dhan for investors. Uh, I'm referring to Sanjeev Bajaj, uh, the master of both Bajaj FinServe and Bajaj Finance. Uh, Bajaj Finance in particular has been uh, almost a Midas touch stock, creating gold year after year, doubling uh, the share price uh, year after year. And uh, one hopes, of course, it continues to do so. Sanjeev, uh, good morning. A very happy Dhanteras and Diwali to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Best wishes to you as well. Okay, well, Sanjeev, uh, you know, Bajaj Finance has uh, been uh, uh, almost a golden touch stock for uh, investors. But this time around, Bajaj FinServe has shown some extraordinary numbers. Uh, can you take us through this kind of an income growth, 33% income growth that you have shown, uh, the various components? Can we see this kind of a first premium growth in uh, the life insurance segment for starters? Lata, as far as the life segment is concerned, as we've been talking about it over the last four to six quarters, we have changed the model of doing business. So it meant on the agency side, which is our biggest channel in the life business, to get in place much better quality agents, which means much better quality staff, uh, rejig the product portfolio, look at much higher efficiencies, look at a greater focus across customer and geography segments. Now it takes time to doing this because we are working with 70, 80,000 agents. Um, I'm happy to see that uh, we are now structurally starting to show good growth and uh, what's important is while our gross premium is up about 23% to you know, uh, 1,447 crore, what is important is our new business premium and this is where we were flat or even falling the last few years, this is up 70% to 782 crore. So uh, we, of course, uh, we, we are still saying it's early days. Uh, there's a lot of work that we need to continue doing there in uh, completing this journey. I think it's still another 12 to 18 months before we can say that we've modeled it right. But um, as we keep going down that path, it puts us into a far more secular position. You will see that our profit on the life side is lower. That's only natural because when you're growing fast uh, and at this rate, you're burning initially uh, at a much higher expense level. Once your renewal premiums start catching up, and we've seen this in our early days when we built uh, life insurance, in many ways we're doing that all over again, that's when the profit starts moving up. So in this case, the fact that the profit is a little lower, 6% lower, that does not worry us at all. We are the right path over there. So that's for the life business. Mm -hmm. But the other uh, trigger really was the general insurance business. We actually had a flat quarter in the first quarter, and we mentioned mm -hmm. that um, the second quarter could be better. Now, uh, we've been fortunate to uh, write a lot of crop insurance uh, in the second quarter. So versus um, 159 crore last year, Q2, we are at over 750 crore. Result of that has been very strong growth in um, our uh, GWP up 45% to 200, 2,179 crore. And uh, if you see our PAT, that is zoomed up over 60% to 234 crore. Naturally, now the crop insurance season is not there every quarter mm. there will be something next quarter also hopefully for uh, the winter crop for rabi but this can create sometimes in non-linear growth mm. but we are happy that we've uh, underwritten this profitably in this quarter but how stable is this business crop insurance can also be wavered in terms of uh, the claims that will come from it uh, are you sure that it will also yield profit So there are two different things when you talk of stability. One is in terms of pricing. Now we have seen over here that there are years where some of the large PSU general insurance companies, if they are falling back on the other business, then they will come very heavily and discount. And if you see our own crop business in the last two, three years, there have been uh, years where our volumes are very low because the profit part of it, your second question, is very relevant. We will underwrite only if there's a reasonable profit. You have to keep in mind that over here, the direct hit to us, even on losses or claims, gets all reinsured. But on the other hand, you have to build a good long-term relationship with the reinsurance company. So you have to make sure it's a win-win situation. So to that extent, it can be reasonably volatile year on year. And that's where we see that over 70% of our business, and that's the highest of any of our peers on the non-life, comes from retail products. Because that's far more stable.
Okay. Sanjeev, hi. Good morning uh, and greetings of the season to you and your entire team and Bajaj. Uh, you know, um, uh, I'm looking for a slightly longer term perspective uh, from your end because in the last four years, in just four years, your, the market cap of Bajaj FinServe has gone up seven times and it's now standing at more than 50,000 crores. So uh, just to talk a little bit about revenue growth, what kind of revenue visibility do you have over the next, say, two to three years from this base of about uh, 25, 30,000 crores per year? Uh, what do you think the growth could be for Bajaj FinServe um, over the next two years? So best wishes to you two uh, for, so, for the festival season, Sonia. And I'm glad that someone's asking me a long-term question, you know, otherwise people are living quarter by quarter. <laughs> and uh, that's a very difficult thing for us to predict. And we don't live quarter by quarter, though we realize that we have to announce results quarter by quarter. So when you're looking at a three to four year perspective, uh, three operating companies, Bajaj Finance, we think a stable 20 to 25 percent uh, growth is clearly possible we've had last few years where we've grown much faster if you look at a non-life company this has been growing at mid-teens and uh, even if i were to take out the crop insurance i think the mid-teens to high teens growth is something that we should see in this period uh, given the fact that our life business is from a very low base i would expect over here uh, higher growth uh, I won't hazard a guess right now to say how high it is because as I said, I do want to see another three or four quarters go by to make sure that the transformation that we've undertaken is stable. But uh, I would say that again, at least a 15-20% growth if not higher for new business, renewals will follow through in the next year or so thereafter. Sanjeev, hi, good morning. Uh, you know, between you and your brother, of course, uh, you've created a lot of wealth for shareholders. Uh, and actually, I say that, you know, uh, you have created more wealth uh, than your elder brother Rajiv as well, if you combine the market cap of Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finserv. So your shareholders will hope that continues. Uh, my, my question is on, on Bajaj Finance in particular. You are the first mover. Uh, we go to Chroma and all. We clearly see that Bajaj Finance has uh, that advantage. Uh, uh, if you could give us some numbers in terms of your, your market share and consumer finance segment and where you see that uh, going from here. Okay, I think that that's an interesting question, but a very, uh, it's not an easy answer. And uh, coming to the first part of what you said, thank you again for your kind words. I think there's great opportunity across these companies, and it's 50,000 people across these companies that's doing this. Two of us can do very little by ourselves, but yes, we're happy to be part and driving those uh, teams. Uh, see, in terms of market share, there's no one that really consolidates market share across consumer durables, digital products now, as you know, mobile stores are a set of uh, businesses by themselves. So that gets calculated separately from what you sell in Tata Chroma or Vijay Sales or Reliance Digital. Um, furniture is completely different. We do that as well. We are now using our card in Big Bazaar in uh, Central Mall. So we have actually gone and expanded the universe of uh, usage for this closed loop card of ours, a loan card of ours to virtually most places that consumers spend. Um, we used to always talk about our market share in the pure consumer durable and home electronics category of about 20-22% of the total sales and by far uh, the largest. But that's no longer a relevant comparison because of the expansion we have done in the last um, 18 months across these categories. For example, this festival season, even on the e-marketplaces, you can, you can swipe and you can use or you can just punch in your Bajaj Finsa VMI card rather than uh, COD or Visa or MasterCard. So we've expanded categories and we've expanded channels dramatically over the last 18 months. Okay. Well, a final question to you, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, you know, we are just now getting our hands around how to analyze insurance companies with two of them getting listed. Uh, you know, uh, your life business, you said the profits are lower because you're only now expanding your uh, agent network and therefore the fixed costs are higher. Uh, is there something in terms of the products you sell? Is more term insurance more profitable? Is more money back and other kinds of uh, insurances more profitable? Uh, what is your mix and what is a more profitable mix? You know, we think the right mix, because you have to also keep in mind, it's not just a question of product, it's a question of customer segment and what your customers need. So we believe that uh, unitlink products between 40 and 60 percent 
and the rest coming from uh, term products is the right mix. Now, within that, things can swing, so you need to manage your costs uh, accordingly, depending on whether ULIPS is at 40 or ULIPS is at 55, 60. It's also, you, as we have seen over the last many years, how the markets move. So we see that when the stock markets are up, there is a large segment of middle class customers that move towards ULIPS. So it's not a question of what we are just selling, though, you know, as they always say, insurance is sold, not bought. But we are seeing some of those things change, especially for ULIPS. So I would say, Simplistically, a 50-50 mix is the right mix uh, to get to make sure that we have enough allowances to cover our expenses. Customers are getting the right mix of products. There's something that has an investment side to it. They also have long-term protection as well through the term products. And at the same time, it gives us a reasonable return on capital because term products require far more capital to be allocated than ULIP. So it's not a simple straight answer, but I think a 50-50 balance is the right balance. And when you told me, Lata, it's going to be a last question, I thought it was going to be another question. I'm happy that question is no longer there. <laughs> no, we would have continued some more. I mean, we have lots of questions to ask you, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. Sanjeev Bajaj, thank you so much for joining us. You have a great year ahead. And once thank again, you. on behalf of all the investors, thank you for the wealth creation that you've done in your company and for the investors over the past few years. Well, from one well, Sanjeev, Sanjeev to actually, another. No, yeah. actually, I must tell you, Sanjeev Bajaj, we are going to detain you at a later date for a longer discussion. It's just that it's result season and we have to cover a lot of corporates. Uh, but thank you very much. I'm